ever been jolted awake in the dead of the night by a stubborn idea that refuses to fade away? I have. In fact, it happens to me all the time, and for some reason, the stillness of the night triggers my creativity, sometimes simply through language, but other times, words are not enough to capture the visions in my mind. That's when the transformative power of sketching comes into play. There are times when the idea is so captivating that I can't fall back to sleep. During these moments, I go to my studio to sketch until I'm again tired enough to return to bed. Sketching is more than just a method to bring your ideas to life. It's a tool for creativity and imagination, a way to communicate your thoughts and unleash them on the blank page. It is the voice of your imagination flowing from your mind to the hand to the pencil, expressing itself through charcoal on paper. Its beauty and effectiveness transcends disciplines. Whether you're an artist, a writer, or a creative of any kind, sketching is a powerful tool that can help render your dreams and bring your visions to life. This video is my ode to sketching, a celebration of my translator in the dark, where we'll explore the importance and potential of sketching and how it can help you unleash your creativity and bring your ideas to life. But for now, let's go back to bed and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. So waking up in the middle of the night to sketch definitely left me exhausted the following day. But I was excited to expand on what I had, what I had started the, the night before. For some reason, I've recently been inspired by ruins and architecture carved out of the natural landscape. Specifically, I was struck by these archaeological sites found in a region in Turkey that I came across on Instagram called Cappadocia. You probably saw the reference image on my monitor while I was sketching last night. And there is just something so mesmerizing about the beauty and craftsmanship it must have taken to carve these cities out of these volcanic rock formations. I, I couldn't tell you what specifically draws me to these sites right now, but I'm determined to find out and I'm going to use sketching to help me figure it out. Before getting started, I decided to rearrange my desk a bit to be more comfortable while working. And as per usual, my brain started to go down this rabbit hole of why sketching is important, the value of it, etc. And I kept thinking about the fascinating connection between our minds and our bodies when transcribing ideas into a sketch and how there is this undeniable connection, this a sort of attunement that takes place where it feels as if we become one with the pencil. And the ideas start to flow naturally from our mind to the paper. And I like to think of this as a translation, a beautiful translation of ideas from imagination to reality, manifesting through sketching to bring them to life. And it turns out that some of these ideas have already been explored in the field of philosophy. And the themes that I found are fascinating. The theme that stood out to me is called embodiment. And it's the one that most closely relates to the relationship and translation process I mentioned earlier. The concept suggests that our bodies and the things we use, like tools, are connected to our minds and the way we experience the world. This means that the way we think and see the world is influenced by how we use our bodies and tools to interact with it. What is different about this concept is that it goes against the belief that our minds are separate from our bodies and from the things around us. Instead, what it's suggesting is that our minds or the mind is created by the relationship between the body, the environment, and the tools we use, 
all of those things together make up our mind. Now, sketching can be seen as a form of embodiment because it involves the integration of our bodies and the drawing tool into a single system. So when we sketch, we use our bodies and the tool to create visual representations of our thoughts and ideas, which is tied to the idea of translating our imagination that I mentioned previously. And then this physical act of drawing is what helps us think more creatively and critically and can also serve as a way of expressing and communicating our thoughts and ideas to other people. In this way, sketching can be considered a form of embodied cognition, which is where the body and the tool, in this case, a pen or a pencil, play a crucial role in the cognitive process of creating and communicating ideas, that beautiful translation. Uh, I love I love all of this and I love finding philosophical concepts that tie into an idea that you've been thinking about. Uh, but this this translation is it's, it's a dance we have with creativity and it can happen through various methods, not just sketching. But the pencil has always been there to help me translate inspiration's call. It's my trusty friend. And it's something that I've talked about in one of my previous videos. There were many other concepts I came across that we could explore in other videos. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. But for now, let's hold on to our newfound philosophical ideas as we explore how to tap into our own creative potential through sketching. So I've actually really been enjoying making this, this exploration of the Cappadocia ruins. And something that's been really interesting to me is the architecture that's embedded and carved into the actual rock formation. So the way that I've been treating this drawing is I found a reference that I really liked and I've been sketching that reference, but there are certain moments that have been more interesting to me uh, throughout the composition. Like for example, this moment right here, I find quite interesting because it literally looks like it's embedded into the rock. So what I did was that I took this moment and I expanded on it. I made a little bit of a, I guess you could say a call out of it um, to explore it. And I mean, I don't have the actual image of what this looks like. I'm just literally making it up as I go. But I basically want to use this as a study of what did this architecture could actually look like if it were embedded in the rock, if, we're, if it were actually there. And in this moment is where I actually start to get excited because I start to imagine and recreate something that I'm seeing in the reference, but I'm making it my own. So now that I have that view of the exterior, I want to dig into the interior and I'm going to start just sketching what I would imagine a section drawing of this would look like right here. And that way we, we go through this process of using sketching as a way of creation because we are creating our own version of this city that actually exists. And then we're also using it as a research tool. We start thinking about what this would look like if it were a section or if it were, in, if it were an interior space. And that's where we start to imagine and create spaces that are completely our own. So after coming across the concept of embodiment, I'm even more convinced that sketching is a magical gateway to the boundless realm of creativity. I mean, it is without a doubt a powerful tool for creativity and imagination, allowing us to bring our ideas to life in a visual and expressive way. Whether you're using traditional media or digital tools, sketching is highly flexible and it allows for exploring and developing unconventional ideas. Like in UX design or architecture, the iterative process of developing ideas in this way is often referred to as sketching through, which is a process that helps us refine and improve our ideas by quickly sketching out multiple versions or trying out different configurations. 
But sketching is more than just a tool for self-expression. It also sharpens our critical thinking skills and helps us better understand and communicate our ideas. This is why sketching is such an excellent tool for research and speculation, as it can be a way to visualize and unravel complex systems and processes. Many artists and designers use sketching to explore contemporary issues facing our world, such as climate change, urbanization, and technological advancement. Actually, this practice is known as speculative design. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make another video to expand on this topic. Ultimately, by sketching out designs that address these issues, creatives can identify opportunities for innovation and contribute to the ongoing dialogue around these critical topics. One of the more experiential benefits of sketching that I appreciate the most is that it demands us to slow down and engage with the world around us, especially in our current overstimulated, attention-seeking daily environments. In a world where I'm constantly asked to consume more content in less time, sketching does the opposite. It asks for our attention and in turn gifts us with a deeper understanding of the world and the ability to see it from new perspectives. This is why I believe that intrinsically, sketching is a catalyst for personal growth and self-discovery. It helps us better comprehend how our thoughts and ideas fit together and how to develop them further, and therefore allows us to unlock the creative potential hidden inside all of us. Elizabeth Gilbert refers to this creative potential in her book, Big Magic, which I'm a big fan of, as strange jewels, claiming that the universe buries them deep within us and then stands back to see if we can find them. The hunt to discover those jewels is what she calls creative living. And I love this concept so much because it sets the stage for methods like sketching to become tools that we can leverage to uncover those jewels and share them with the world. I've spoken before about how important it is to be ready to answer inspiration's call whenever it arrives and the beautiful process of transcribing that takes place when we do. Depending on your chosen medium, that process of transcribing and translating inspiration into reality will look different. Still, sketching can be one of the many tools in your arsenal to bring your ideas to life to understand them and manifest them in a way that you can share as artifacts of your imagination with others. There is a beautiful excerpt from Big Magic where Gilbert retells a story from poet Ruth Stone about her encounters with inspiration when an idea for a poem comes to her and how she translates it into writing. And I want to share with you, and it goes something like this. Ruth told me that when she was growing up in rural Virginia, she would be out working in the fields and she said she would feel and hear a poem coming at her from over the landscape. And she said it was like a thunderous train of air and it would come barreling down at her over the landscape. And she felt it coming because it would shake the earth under her feet. She knew that she had only one thing to do at that point and that was to, in her words, run like hell. And she would run like hell to the house and she would be getting chased by this poem. And the whole deal was that she had to get a piece of paper and a pencil fast enough so that when it thundered through her, she could collect it and grab it on the page. And other times, she wouldn't be as fast enough. So she'd be running and running and she wouldn't get to the house and the poem would barrel through her and she would miss it and she said it would continue on across the landscape looking as she put it for another poet and then there were these moments where she would almost miss it right so she's running to the house and she's looking for the paper and the poem passes through her and she grabs a pencil just as it's going through her and then she said it was like she would reach out with her other hand and she would catch it. 
she would catch the poem by its tail and she would pull it backwards into her body as she was transcribing on the page. And in these instances, the poem would come up on the page perfect and intact, but backwards from the last word to the first. I don't think we can find a better story to summarize all the ideas we've discussed in this video. And I, I just love this story so much and it has stuck with me ever since I read it in the book. And I hope that it inspires you to catch your ideas through sketching or whatever medium works best for you. And just like the many poems that Ruth missed, many other ideas will come if you don't get to capture yours in time. But if you want to be ready, even in the middle of the night, keep a sketchbook on your nightstand so you can catch that pesky idea by its tail whenever it decides to arrive. So something that I love about the section drawing is that it allows you to start imagining what this potential building or space looks like in the interior. So what I was doing in the small isometric drawing was that I wanted to use two different treatments for the actual part of the building and what was part of the mountain itself. So the way that I represented that was by using pencil for the rocks and then ink for the architecture. And I wanted to bring that same treatment to the section. So what I've been trying to do is as I carve into the, the side of the mountain in this section cut, I wanted to start to represent what was part of the poche or the cut of the building as black ink and everything else that was cut as part of the mountain to be using the same pencil texture that I was using in the isometric view. That way, when you are looking at the section, you can clearly see what is part of the building and what is part of the mountain. And what's interesting to me about this is as we're imagining this space and as we're coming up with what we think it looks like, we can start to really think about the relationship between the mountain and the building and start to imagine how that building might have been carved into the mountain itself and represent that in a way that is distinguishable by someone that does not understand or does not have the context of what we were thinking when we were making the drawing. So that's why, that's, that's, that's why I find the section drawing useful. And when you, if we, were ha if we were to have a floor plan here, you would want to bring those similar relationships into the floor plan. And remember, this is not a finished drawing. This is, this is in a way a sketch exploration that's also acting as a diagram for us to visually represent what we're thinking and get it onto the paper. And there is no pressure to use these research or exploratory sketches as um, there's no pressure to get them into a final form or a final stage. Keeping them sketchy and keeping them rough is definitely okay because the idea is that you don't get stuck in these sketches, which I I want to keep adding detail and adding detail, so it's really tempting for me too. Um, but what you want to do is just explore the idea that you're trying to sketch through and then move on and explore it in different ways. And uh, another natural step for this drawing would be to get some trace paper and trace over it and start tracing um, actual scale of people and start thinking more specific about what the heights and what the the actual proportions of the space actually look like. Or you could, we could always go back and continue drawing the rest of the original sketch and start pulling other parts of it that, that we like. It, this could be a never ending process and it's just meant to be a fun exploratory way to engage with your ideas. So don't feel like you need to get it to a certain stage for it to be considered finish. It's considered finish when you've finally been able to get that idea that's in your, in your mind out onto the paper into a tangible form. And with that said, I am wishing you all an inspiration-filled life, a happy new year, 
And if you're curious to learn more about inspiration, feel free to check out my other video, which I will leave on the right here in the thumbnail. And I will see you all there. Bye.